The 2024 race is on and gloves are coming off. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is set to announce her own bid for the president in the coming weeks, according to reporting from the South Carolina Post and Courier, solidifying herself as the first official challenger to former President Trump for the GOP ticket. Here's what Haley's former boss had to say about rumors she might run this weekend. Nikki Haley called me the other day to talk to me, I talked to her for a little while, but I said, look, you know, go by your heart if you want to run. She's publicly said that I would never run against my president. He was a great president. Now, listen to what the former president had to say about a different potential 2024 challenger, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. I mean, I had governors that uh, decided not to close their state. Florida was actually closed for a very long period of time. I remember it closed the beaches and everything else. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> they're trying to rewrite history. It's sometimes hard to do. So then when I hear he might run, you know, I consider that very disloyal. But it's not about loyalty. But to me it is. It's always about loyalty. It's not about loyalty, except to me it is. It is absolutely about loyalty. Now, just yesterday, Ron DeSantis was asked about Trump's diss and if his response is any indication of how the 2024 primary cycle might look. Well, grab your popcorn. This, um, I roll out of bed. I have people attacking me from all angles. It's been happening for many, many years. And if you look at the good thing about it, though, is like if you take a crisis situation like COVID, you know, the good thing about it is when you're an elected executive, you have to make all kinds of decisions. You've got to steer that ship. And the good thing is, is that the people are able to render a judgment on that, whether they reelect you or not. And I'm happy to say, you know, in my case, not only did we win reelection, we won with the highest percentage of the vote that any Republican governor candidate has in the history of the state of Florida. What do you think about that response? Is he is he demonstrating how he's going to parry the insults from Donald Trump in the in the main race here? And did he do an effective job? Uh, I think so. I mean, it, it remains to be seen what happens when the two of them really go head to head. Uh, but first, I want to address Nikki Haley. Trump actually very smartly there when asked about her. That was a smart response. He knows uh, probably, or based on that response, I think he knows. Nikki Haley is no threat to him mm -hmm. whatsoever. There's no chance that Nikki Haley will be the, can the GOP candidate for president. Uh, Trump knows that. Ron DeSantis knows that. Everyone mm. knows that. I don't know if Nikki Haley knows that or not. Maybe she doesn't. Probably she does. And in fact, running for president is just a good way to garner more PR for oneself. She could, you know, she, she running for president or president of a think tank eventually. Right? I mean, do you think she might have said that to Trump and that's why he's so um, soft on her, saying, hey, don't be offended. I'm obviously not she making a run of it. And he knows that he has at least some competent people around him, I imagine. I mean, you'd have to be a true moron to, to actually worry about Nikki Haley. Look, the, she's not well liked um, among the among the GOP base. I see that when I when I talk to people. Um, th there's something uh, sh I think she's perceived as being a little inauthentic mm. for having kind of pivoted a bunch of times from a I'm loyal to Trump. I'm ready to move on from Trump. I'm back with Trump. Um, I, I don't think she appears to stand for a lot, mm. to, or, or to the extent she stands for anything, she, it's more in the kind of old school Bush neoconservative direction. Um, that, that's that's how I think she portrays himself. That's at least how she's perceived. So I don't she, have any. It, I, I, she's she's very well spoken. Mm -hmm. um, I think she was a popular governor, but I don't think there's a lot of appetite among the GOP faithful for her to be the standard So bearer. tell me if I I'm wrong. It, it feels to me like this is the kind of run that feels like a run for the VP spot. We had a hugely crowded mm -hmm. field on the Democratic end of this thing um, back in 2020, and it felt immediately like a lot of these candidates, especially ones that had unique kind of demographic characteristics, were in this to, to be paired with one of the older white men who was going to take the whole thing home. Do you see this as a similar strategy, or do you see her as an unlikely VP pick for any of the people who are more mainstream candidates? I don't see her as a particularly likely VP pick for Trump. Um, I, I think Trump will be more likely to pick someone closer in temperament to himself or closer to closer to uh, who's more beloved by his base. He doesn't he, even though he, them, he picked Pence last time as kind of a balancing act. But he regrets that, right? Pence, Pence stabbed in the back. He wants someone, it's all about loyalty. He wants someone super duper duper loyal. Mm -hmm. Someone who actually runs against him in this primary, I don't think they're going to get 
picked unless mm. he needs to ink that deal to get them out of the race or something. Mm. So I, I think this is more about her own raising her national profile. Maybe she has a book to sell. Maybe she wants to do a speaking tour. Mm. That's that's an issue. There's no downside to running for president. That's why there were 18,000 people who did it in the, in the GOP circles last time. Mm. Uh, and will be a real problem again because, let's be realistic, it's going to be Trump or it's going to be DeSantis. There's no one else has any chance whatsoever unless both those figures decide not to run for president. It will be one of them. The more people that run, the more it favors Trump. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's just the two of them and only Nikki Haley and only Mike Pence, who, again, don't really have a constituency, I don't believe, then, then DeSantis will, will be a formidable challenger. And it's worth noting, this is from a January 31st GOP primary tracker poll. Donald Trump is at 48% over Ron DeSantis's 31% yeah. uh, in, in polls for who's going to eke it out as the but Republican nominee. But that's pretty, cl- I mean, it's early. There it's, are still a early. lot of people who don't know who DeSantis even is. And Trump's lead used to be, I think, a little bit larger. Yeah. There was like a 20-point gap at one point. So Ron DeSantis is closing in. But I think that some of the predictions that say Donald Trump was out of it, the second he announced, people were saying he was low energy, that he doesn't have the mojo anymore. The, the polls tell a slightly different story. Yes. It, it's it's he's, close. He's in the game. I, I mean, I try to say, yes, when I talk about this, I by no means want anyone to have some delusion that, like, Trump is done. I think DeSantis is certainly capable of defeating him. In a head-to-head match between just the two of them, I, I would think DeSantis would be slightly favored because conservative media has consolidated around him to a to a unprecedented degree he seems very well liked by the base and he's positioning himself to run to Trump's right mm-hmm. on covid stuff which is which was what was in that clip you know Trump's trying to remind people that well Florida was closed down for a little while but DeSantis is going to hit Trump on Operation Warp Speed and vaccines and, and being more seemingly pro vaccine which is going to peel off in in the kind of hard right MAGA base primary type stuff is going to sap a little bit of enthusiasm for Trump over DeSantis. So, so there's a, I'm saying there's a strategy in place. There's a way forward for DeSantis to beat Trump, but there could be so many other factors. There could be a million people running and he gets kind of lost in the noise. Conservative media could change their mind if something bad comes out about him or if they find out their viewers will not stomach any turning on Trump whatsoever. They'll go back to touting Trump. So it's 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 still up for grabs. Yeah. Don't don't mistake me. Don't I'm not it is gonna be an interesting fight to the death. Yeah, and, and it's also worth noting that in that same poll, next is Mike Pence down at eight percent. Yeah, he is Nikki okay. Haley at three percent. So she's 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 up there in terms she of has the more ranking. Than Mike Pence, but but it's, it's not, not and then Liz Cheney's bad. also at three, Ted Cruz is at two, and on and on and on. So what do you make so the big kind of unknown, and you mentioned this a little while ago, is what happens when Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis are actually head to head. We obviously are very familiar familiar with Donald Trump and his rhetorical style. Even before he ran for president, he was the subject of rap songs and reality TV shows. And like he was a part of the American fabric. Mm -hmm. He's in Home Alone, Escape in New York, Lost in New York. (laughs) Okay. Ron DeSantis comparatively is this unknown quality. And Trump, many people have underestimated Trump. He obviously blew through the 2016 primary competition because no one had quite figured out how to parry his insults without getting sucked down into a mudslinging battle that no one can beat Trump in. Mm-hmm. I was rather impressed by DeSantis's ability to not engage, seem like the mature adult in the room, seem substantive, you know, defer to the interests of the people who reelected him. You know, is that going to work or are people going to like miss the blood sport? He never calls out Trump by name because you can't because the the MAGA base will not tolerate criticisms of Trump directly, Um, except unless you can find something they didn't quite love about Trump, including uh, his his advocacy of the vaccines, uh, maybe a few other things. So he is right now he's adopting the correct strategy of just like, you know, say I'm above this or, you know, this is this is vexing that some people I'm not going to say who they are, but they would come after me. Um, I I mean, honestly, he's learned a little bit of that style from Trump, Mm. uh, from being from from being 
uh, confrontational or fighting back without appearing to fight back. You know, Trump will say contradictory things. Like like he just said in that clip, mm-hmm. he'll say, you know, for some people, you know, it's not all about loyalty, but it is for me, and it's all about loyalty. <laughs> like he hits you with the, yeah, you know, loyalty doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Yeah, he says what he knows he's supposed to say to seem like a halfway decent normal person, and then it's like, ah, but this is who I am. It's, yeah, you know. but they're, they're going to have to, they're going to have to fight it out. They will fight it out. It is going to happen, and then and then we'll see how people in in Republican primaries, Republican voters feel about these two men when put up against each other. Yes, Trump has been counted out before, and every other time that was a miscalculation. So I am not making that mistake yeah, <laughs> right now. I to wouldn't. be clear, could still be him, uh, but we'll have to see. Yeah, more rising right after this.